but Tislerian's following other clues are still hard at work. Most Tesla enthusiasts concentrate on his work with wireless and his experiments at Colorado Springs. They claim that this interference with shortwave radio transmissions is caused by a Tesla magnifying transmitter. The noise is called the woodpecker because it makes a little pecking noise ten times per second. It's been going on since 1976 and it's blotted out radio transmissions on frequencies between 6 and 20 megahertz. 10 pulses a second is extremely low frequency. The woodpecker has been traced to Latvia. There seems to be a second transmitter near Kiev and a third further to the east. It's not jamming, it's too random. So what are the Russians up to? Andrew Mikrovsky is an official working for the Canadian government in Ottawa. In his spare time, he runs a group called Planetary Association for Clean Energy, PACE for short. PACE thinks the Russians are using a Tesla transmitter to affect the way we behave. Now, the signals, especially the one that you see on the oscilloscope, which are magnetic only, and by the way, that's the Soviet signal, that happens to be something that can work on my brain and anybody uh, on this planet at this time. Uh, because it is the same frequency in the same frequency range, and it is also the same type of activity that goes in our brain. That is the terrible thing about the Soviet signals, the capacity to impose on the way people would, quote, think. This thinking I'm talking about is the thinking of being peaceful, the, the ability to be calm, um, uh, the ability to rationalize, are all affected from a purely mental point of view by signals of this nature. Is there any defense? This personal transmitter puts out 7.8 cycles a second, which Mikrovsky says is a natural planetary frequency the body is tuned to. It swamps the incoming signal from the woodpecker. Remove the transmitter's protective field and the Russian signal reasserts itself. It is being used, as far as we are aware, by the German civil service. Uh, there in Germany is called Weiterset. And it is mainly a protective mechanism to ensure that the, a German civil servant, especially on external affairs duty, uh, is able to keep his composure uh, for, in negotiations, or especially uh, with other people, uh, other countries, to make sure that they're not influenced. The German government denies using the Viter set, but Mikrovsky is sure it works. That's one approach to the problem. But there's a more likely solution. The Russians might be trying out a form of over-the-horizon radar, which would allow them to locate incoming objects with extreme accuracy, even if they're totally out of line of sight. One analysis says every woodpecker pulse carries a sophisticated code. Each pulse lasts 3,100 microseconds. Over a sequence of 100 microsecond intervals, the signal is counted as a zero until it reverses phase or direction. Phase reversal changes the zero to one. Each further reversal alters one to zero and back again until all the pulse has been transmitted. The final list gives what's called a maximum length pseudo-random binary sequence, a unique code. When a signal is returned from an approaching object, it can only be used if its pattern matches precisely the pattern of the transmitted signal, a sort of key that fits into a lock. The result gives a radar system which can see five times further than any ordinary radar of the same power, or more likely, five times more accurately at the same distance there's almost certainly no connection with Tesla and the magnifying transmitter. But ELF, extremely low frequency, will be most important for the United States submarine fleet in years to come. Could submarines be protected by a development of Tesla's wireless work? 
Submarines are at their most vulnerable when they approach the surface to communicate with their headquarters. To change that, the US Navy is building two giant wireless stations up near the Canadian border in Wisconsin and Michigan. Each of them will radiate under four watts, just enough to light a doll's house. But the power behind each transmitter will be enormous. The station at Clam Lake needs two aerials, each 14 miles long. That's because the signals, like the woodpecker, will go out at extremely low frequency, ELF, which requires special arrangements. Because ELF is low frequency, it takes a long time to send a message, but it does penetrate the ocean to great depth. Vessels like the newly launched Ohio will be able to receive operating orders without ever rising to the perils at the surface. Most Tislerians believe that the great man described ELF transmissions in his patents and that the US Navy went back to those patents for the concept. But what did Tesla actually say? It is necessary to employ oscillations in which the rate of radiation of energy into space in the form of Hertzian or electromagnetic waves is very small. The lowest frequency would appear to be six or second. All credit to Tesla for even thinking in this area, but it becomes clear from the context that he was describing the sending of electrical energy without wires through the Earth and not the sending of radio waves through the sea.